Welcome to the Coast of Maine Retail Compost Podcast. I'm Cameron Bonsi. I'm here with, with Pete Bottomley and with Terry Skillen, who's the owner of Skillen's Greenhouses in Falmouth, Cumberland, and Brunswick, Maine. Um, and we're gonna, tonight we're going to talk about how to help the garden center owner uh, market compost products and specifically Coast of Maine products. Um, Terry, you you folks at Skillens have been very successful with Coast of Maine. Um, what are some of the basic things that you do in, in setting up the space for the soils? Well, I think a couple of things you can look at and think about is it doesn't all have to be, I think you maybe have all your Coast of Maine products maybe in one spot, but doesn't mean they can't, some of those bags can't be in another spot as well. Don't, don't just think that You've got it in the front yard, it's along the sidewalk, and that's good. You know, you have a nice greenhouse full of uh, great vegetables or, or nursery stock or fruit trees or whatever. You know, there's no reason why you can't either have more of those bags sitting there on a small display, or maybe it's just a great, bright, colorful sign that has a specific product on it. Now, when you come to signs, to keep the signs fresh, you know, if you've got a pallet up front and the sign gets beat up, it makes you in your mind kind of wonder as a consumer. If the signs beat up, looks like that. How long have those bags been there? So maybe they don't right. sell anyway. So keep those signs fresh. Signs are cheap. Keep them out there. Keep them fresh. And certainly always have a price. Yeah. Because people will not buy a product if they have to ask what the price is. Well, a they lot get of times they, 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 they know they scared. definitely get scared. Yeah. Like, well, if there's no price on. How much can it be? It's like right. whoa. So yeah, pricing is very important. Um, you can also get creative with your pricing too. We found that a lot of a lot of our consumers, a lot of our home gardeners and, and friends were buying like three bags at a time uh, of mixed bag goods. And we wanted them to step it up a little bit more and we wanted to reward them for that. So we gave them a 10% for buying five bags or more. And that it's amazing that those sales, oh, that actually works. it made a big difference. Yeah. You know, it, it's a savings, it's, it's a savings they can calculate easily and they had 10%. It's, it's pretty easy for even for where I went to high school, it's easy to figure that out. <laughs> and then the other important thing I think we find quite a bit is that Make sure your pallets are full up front. Don't maybe three quarters is fine, but you don't want to have a half or, or less, certainly less than half a pallet of any bag going up front. Obviously, if it's the end of the season um, or you don't have it in stock, but if you have full pallets in stock, bring them out, strip off whatever left in the other pallet, and just put on top of that one. Nice and neat. Keep it neat, but keep that pallet full, and it's just going to sell so much more. Pete, you were mentioning a garden center that had success with moving. Coast well, yeah, you, uh, one of the most important things to consider is your, the location of the pallets. Because a lot of times, if, if there isn't a salesperson saying, hey, you should have a bag of this with your veggies or mm -hmm. with your tree, um, it has to occur to them themselves. It has to be an impulse item. Right. So uh, I had a situation in, in Massachusetts, a, a great garden center called Allendale Farm, and they were carrying only Coast of Maine products, and they sort of had the the pallets off on a hillside. You could see them, but they weren't really easy to get at. So what we did was we moved them all to the front, and we also put pallet signs in, so it was all priced and everything had a description on it. And their sales doubled in, from one year to the next. Doubled. And that was during the time when we had rainy springs for three years in a row. Right. So it wasn't because it was better weather. Everybody else is pretty flat. And you're talking so about we, a product that has margin, too. Yeah. And so. And you don't well, have and I, I think that's really important to, to touch on that is the, is the fact that, that it does have margin, that people are able, garden center owners are able to get their margin with our product where they wouldn't necessarily with some national type brands. Um, right. and, and how does that impact? I mean, obviously it has a positive impact on what you're doing. Yeah, it, it makes purchases and decision of who sort of is in the front row, right. it makes it a lot easier. Because that's paying a lot of bills. It's paying uh, people's salary. It's, it's creating, helping create more jobs. It's doing. It's very positive when you have that kind of a product in your in your store. Yeah, we we're talking about signage. I, I want people to know because because I, I think a lot of garden center owners will be listening to this. Is that um, we're very proud of the signage that we that we give to garden centers, um, and they should never hesitate to ask us if we happen to miss it. That uh, we have great pallet signs that the, the actual frames are made by main bucket. Mm -hmm. um, and we do the inserts that are very specific to the product. Um, we do training seminars for the employees. Um, and we have great banners and mm -hmm. other signage that we do. So all that stuff to help you merchandise. We're, 
right there to help them too. Um, we, I think we touched, you were, you already touched on the um, loading the pallets, pallet location. What else is? Well, there's a couple things I've seen out uh, in my road trips that I just want to bring up. Yeah. And maybe very few people do this, but if there's one or two that will stop doing this, that'd be a good thing. Right. So one thing is don't take the plastic wrap off until you're ready to display the product. Yeah. Right. Because it's just going to get wet and heavy, and of course, the bags uh, will get dirty. The bags will get mm -hmm. dirty. Um, the second one, speaking of the bags being dirty, is don't take the last five bags and put them on top of mm -hmm. the new pallet yep. that you just unwrapped. Because they are nasty. I've seen some really nasty five, yeah. you know, five really nasty bags put yep. on top of a beautiful new pallet. That's a good point. What's going to happen? Yeah. They're not going to sell. No. Those, those are the Valentine's. five bags to give to a garden center employee to there get them go. to fall in love sure. with the product so Especially that they want to yeah. sell it. The bottom bags are all, not always, but they quite often can be ripped and torn and, the, you know, the force trucks hit them. It, you know, it's funny you say about the pallet wraps. It's certainly when there are stores in pallet wrap, but it drives me nuts when I go, go buy the pallets on the front for sale. And they're still oh, wrapped up. They're partly. Oh, partly the top of my head pops down, off. Yeah. I, it just pops off. I said, yeah. "What are you doing?" Or they rip it halfway open. It's, oh yeah, that's classy. Well, the other, the <laughs> other point. speaking yeah. of the bags and and ripping open, our bags are tough. Our bags yeah. are beautiful and tough. I mean, I, I, I has that been your experience at Skillin? Yeah, I think I, I think definitely. I think we have. And that's a good point. And I'm not sure I always think about it, but I think quite often there's less ripped bags that we get from coast to Maine just from sitting out there for a while is because you don't, those hot days or you're going too fast, you don't put your fingers to the bag. And so that, that that's a huge, that, yeah. again, you know, shrink is terrible and it just cuts into your margins. So well, and, and we, shrink. we pay extra for those bags, you know, yeah. and it does, it does impact the cost, but in the long run, the garden center is making more. Yeah. And the other, the other thing that if people that have seen our bags, the bags market themselves in a lot of ways. I mean, there we have people that call us and say, "Send me a bag to put on the wall." They don't yeah. even ask for the signs; they want a bag. Yeah, you know. So, so there's there's that that goes along with the marketing too. Um, employee training is huge. We find that every time that we do any type of employee training and get them that one-on-one, -on -one, like you were talking in an earlier segment, where you have a young employee that gets a person to talk to and they think they're Obi-Wan Kenobi, even though they don't know who he is, right. um, that that has a big impact on that sales and that sell through of that item because just creating that passion. So I think that's, um, you know, I think we've covered most of those things. Is there anything there else? really good points yep. there, yeah. The, uh, the garden center owners that are listening, you know, I invite you to call us anytime. Um, you can reach Coast of Maine at 800-345-9315. Visit our website at coastofmaine.com. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you, and we'd love to have you carry our product. Thanks for joining us.